Hello everyone and welcome to Humanity Sunday in the Season of Creation. I'm Jason John. But that's just my name. Who am I as a human? And who am I as a human in relation to other animals? That's what we're going to explore in today's sermon. As Christians, we have at least four stories to give us the answer to that question. In the first story, I am incredible, unique, one of a kind. I am the image of God. I am given dominion over this planet to rule it. Now, the king of Babylon seemed to think that he was the only image of God. But it turns out that I share that image with about 7 billion other people, which means I'm meant to share the rulership of the planet and control of the planet with them as well. I am the earth creature. The Adam formed from the Adamar, the earthling formed from the earth. I'm here to till and keep the garden. Though tilling isn't fundamentally about this, it's the Hebrew word to serve. And keeping isn't about owning, it's about keeping safe. I'm here to serve and protect God's garden. But not just for humans. This whole planet is a garden. Even the bits that don't suit us. Here to provide shelter and food for all of the creatures that God created and declared good and which I have named. I'm now a neighbour to every other creature on the planet because I have spread out that far. So I need to work out what it means to be a good neighbour and how I can share resources properly and fairly with my neighbours. In the fourth story, I'm part of an incredible family. People that have looked into it have told me that my great-great-great-grandfather came from Wales. But Charles Darwin and the people who followed him have told me that my great-great-great-grandfather in Wales connects me to an incredible family, stretching all the way back to the beginning of life itself. His great-great-great-great-great-grandparents roamed the grasslands of Africa, while their ancestors made their living swinging from tree to tree. And so on, all the way back to the ocean. Of course, Jesus didn't talk about evolution, but he did talk about family and what it means to be family. It means having regard for your family, but also not being controlled by your biological family, as seeing yourself as part of something bigger. The story that he told that I think is the most helpful parable for us as we think about what it means to be humans, part of the earth family, is the story of the prodigal son. Many of us maybe are that younger son who's gone off and spent the family's resources, wasted everything away until finally, hopefully, coming to our senses and returning to a more humble place in the family. Others of us might be represented by the older brother who has always lived well on the earth and now struggles with resentment and forgiveness of those who have wasted so many of its resources. I find something in each of those stories for me that helps me in my faith and my discipleship as a Christian who believes that God cares for the earth and who loves the rest of life. The story about sharing dominion, the Genesis 1 story, reminds me that we shouldn't let certain people have more dominion than others. We shouldn't let people push us around and make decisions on our behalf. If we're going to have leaders, then they ought to be elected democratically so that everyone still has a share in dominion through them. It shouldn't just be up to the rich and the powerful to call the shots. It certainly shouldn't be the case in our world that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Clearly Genesis 1 is telling us that's not what God has in mind. The Genesis 2 story, which has us serving and protecting the garden, or even tilling and keeping it, also has meant a lot to me. When people are destroying parts of the garden for their own greed, instead of thinking about how best to tend it to meet our needs and the needs of all the other creatures on the planet, then there's a role for us Christians in getting involved in protecting that part of creation. There's a role for us in making sure that enough food is produced for everyone. There's a role for making sure that enough shelter 
is available to all, not only to humans, but to other creatures as well. The idea that we are here as gardeners, here to tend the creation, is a very powerful idea. When Jesus talked about neighbour, clearly he was talking about other humans. For him, for his listeners, the scandal was that he was talking about humans that none of them would have considered having any merit or any claim on their concern. The despised Samaritan, the foreigner. Nowadays, we're not just neighbours to Samaritans, we're neighbours to the whole of creation. And so I know that everything that I do has an impact on other creatures as well as other humans. We need to sit back every now and then and think about how our actions as human beings are impacting on the rest of the planet around us and on other creatures. We also need to remember the neighbours who are the future generations to come. The resources that we use today, if we don't use them sustainably, won't be available to our neighbours in the future. How does that affect what we do today and how we go about meeting our needs and perhaps not all of our greeds? Finally, the story, the insight that I come from billions of generations of ancestors, all of whom have managed to survive on this planet and find their way is greatly encouraging to me. Who am I in that story of the prodigal? I think I'm probably a bit of everything. Using resources more than I should at times, aware of that and trying to turn back and repent at other times. Well, over to you. The first question is which of those stories, if any, rings the most true for you? Is it the Genesis 1 story, where we are above all creatures, unique in the image of God, and yet all equal ourselves? meant to be sharing dominion across the seven billion of us so that no one is left out? Is it the Genesis 2 story where we're here to serve and protect God's garden, not to meet our own greeds? Is it the idea that we are the neighbour of all creatures around us and have to ask what we should do for them, thinking about what we would want them to do for us if the positions were reversed? Or is it the sense that we're all part of the same family, wondering what it would mean for humanity to repent and return? Or is there another biblical story that you would use to talk about our relationship with creation? Enjoy.